Welcome back, everybody. Live from Prague, Czech Republic. It's time to continue the EU road to BlizzCon day number one. It's time for Tice versus Oskaka and find out who is going to be the first person to go to BlizzCon and represent Europe. My name is Frodan, and I'm joined on the desk by uh, Martin Nimsflipovic and Ianne Savitz Mikkonen. Uh, they're going to be casting the next match, but before we do, we also want to talk a little bit and preview this upcoming series. Now, Oskaka defeated Hoy in the very first day, uh, match of the day, where we were able to effectively take out his teammate, but we didn't get to see much of Tice. Uh, Nims, you were actually following that series, so what exactly happened in, in that match? I wasn't fully following it, unfortunately. I know it's a 3-1, so a pretty good and convincing victory for Thais. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything else, unfortunately. Okay, well, we do know that Maverick is one of the most consistent players in Europe, and he was my pick to potentially win the group and, and go to the finals. However, uh, he's going to have to defeat uh, you know, one of the opponents in the losers match first, and he did end up dropping to Thais, who's been incredibly consistent as well. We talk about uh, consistency. Tice is almost a definition of it. Every tournament he enters, maybe he doesn't win it all, but he's always placing top eight, semifinals, or maybe even better. It's actually a great matchup because Maverick is really similar to Thais. So uh, we missed that one, but right now Thais versus Kaka is uh, another one where there's the, let's say, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of champions uh, fighting against each other. So I'm really excited for that specific match and to see who is going to advance uh, to our top four. So you've played Thais uh, a number of times. What really defines him as a player in your opinion? I think... I think yeah. that Thais like, does very few mistakes. He might not make the most fanciest plays in the world, but he's always so consistent. He's one of the most consistent players throughout the, uh, all of Hearthstone, really, the past two years. He's been always doing well, getting those top fours, top eights. And here he is in the winner's match. I would expect him to be playing something quite similar to Life Coach, because I know that they were practicing together a lot. Thais was actually, he flew to to Austria, I believe he was at the life coach's place and they, were, they have been practicing like mad for this. So sure. we might see the same kind of tech choices as well, like for example the big game hunter and warrior. I wouldn't be surprised if Thais chose to bring it as well. It's true. This is where team practice matters a lot because then you can align uh, ideals, you can practice them against each other and maybe even feel very comfortable running both. And the fact that Thais and life coach are in different groups also makes it very good for them in the case that they both were able to advance in the same position. They don't have to play each other and they can both go to BlizzCon. Now, we did see the lineups, and we saw that he did differ fundamentally from Life Coach. He's not bringing Hunter, he's bringing the Warlock. That's a very standard lineup, it's similar to uh, Nyria, in fact. How do you think it measures up against Oskaka, who chose to bring Priest instead of that war Warlock deck? Well, I think it still measures well. This, this lineup, uh, the Holy Trinity of Hearthstone right now in the current meta game, is really hard to counter. You can't really counter it because Patron, uh, Druid are the decks that are almost uncounterable. You, you can try to, to fight them with, uh, with Handlock, but it doesn't always work. And then Oskaka bringing the Dragon Priest, it's like uh, this, this random element to the lineups. He will try to fight back with that, but uh, it's really hard to fight versus the strongest decks right now. I think that, might, that bringing Priest might hurt Ostkaga here. He was talking about it in this interview, how he was practiced against a different lineup than, he, than what he went because of his first opponent, Hoi, who was bringing a Hunter. Mm -hmm. So I think the Priest might have been there just to counter Hoi, expecting no handlock. But here, here is a handlock. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna call it just yet, but that priest might struggle a little bit. I'm we'll really see. happy. I mean, it can also beat the druid. It can, it can, it can match up against it. And it's not bad against patrons sometimes because of the amount of pressure it can build up. So I'm still feeling the priest overall. It's just it's gonna be very tricky against that warlock deck. You just have to dodge one of the three matchups. Absolutely, right. I think that the priest will be the best uh, versus uh, patrons specifically. All right. Well, we're almost about to begin. So real quick, I want to ask you guys about your predictions. Who is going to be our first player from Europe to go to BlizzCon? I'm going to say Thais. I have to say Thais as well. I think just looking at the lineup, so I think he has that small edge, but anything can happen. If that Priest gets lined up against the Druid, Priest can win. That's yeah, true, and we saw it start off the series last time in a surprise fashion. It's like, you really want to start off with Priest? It's very ambitious, but end up working out okay against at least Hoy. Uh, maybe we'll find out if that's the case up against Tice. I'm going to go ahead and throw my lot with Oskaka. I think it's time that we see the results match up with his practice. He's a guy that's put in a lot of time, and sure, Tice is very consistent with tournaments. In fact, he's gotten points from four tournaments this year on top of four top ladder finishes. But it's time to find out who's going to win. Tice versus Oskaka. The winner goes to BlizzCon. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Freudan. All right, so we're going to see Druid versus Warrior. That's the Patron versus a standard run Druid. Yeah, it seems to be. Um, so Tice is the Warrior player, I believe. So it's a little bit flipped right now. 
Yeah, but uh, what do you think about the matchups, Savit? So we talked about it many times before, Patron versus Druid. A lot of people say Patron is favored, a lot of people say Druid is favored. Uh, personally, who do you think is going to gonna take it? Which class? I would rather be playing the Warrior, but the Warrior needs to get those right cards. They need to go off with the, with, uh, with the Patron. So we saw that when Nairia was playing uh, his Warrior, he just went from Warzone Commander on turn 3. That's completely fine. You don't need Warzone Commander floating Berserker to win against uh, against the Druid. What you need to do against Druid is that you have to get the Patron, and you have to make four of them. Yeah, on turn 5 possibly, turn yeah, 6 maybe with the narration. Turn 5 is when you want to do it, but uh, turn 6 also fine. Sometimes you just don't pick it up, and if both of your patrons are at the bottom, uh, the warrior might struggle. I would actually want to play Druid in this matchup, because with Druid, okay. if I'm able to play the minions early, maybe have the shade with Innervate, and then uh, Druid of the Claw on 5, uh, I might be able to just stop the patrons, and even though patron would like to have the, the patron in rage whirlwind turn, or maybe death spite turn on 5, I'll have minions that can actually trade into them, and then without the Battle Rage, Patron would just run out of cards. Fair enough. It's definitely not a one-sided matchup. It can go either way. Let's look at the starting hands. Oh, wow. Thais does have that Grim Patron and an Inner Rage to go with it. If he finds that Death Spite, we might see that turn 4 happen. And I'm sorry, turn 5 happen. It's so interesting that in most matchups, you actually mulligan Patron away. But in this specific one, you want to have Patron and Inner Rage. Absolutely. All right, from Oskaka's perspective, what you really want is a ramp. Uh, he has the coin and inner, innervate as well, so he'll be able to coin the shade if he chooses to. Uh, what are the other lands to play? Uh, it's a bit unfortunate he didn't find the Wild Growth, but with that innervate, it, it does help out with his curve, and I, I think the hero power might be too, a little bit too weak here, so maybe, maybe coin the shade here. Next turn, maybe innervate out the Druid of the Claw. All right, so he coins the shade, and that's exactly because he wants to have minions early versus uh, warrior, so that he can... Uh, well, counter the minions, counter the, uh, the patrons if they show up. There is an inner age top deck. Yep, makes a lot of sense to get the shade out as fast as you can. Warrior needs to do double whirlwind effects, and they have to do it immediately. Otherwise, the shade is just going to be there potentially forever. It's extremely difficult to remove. Absolutely. That inner age for Thais, that's really interesting. He will be able to have more patrons there, because even, even though he has patron and inner age in five, if he just creates two patrons, that might not be enough. Oh yeah, he, he really wants to find the Whirlwind effect as well. Either just a card Whirlwind or from the Death Spite. But going for Patron, Inner Rage, Inner Rage can work out sometimes. It depends. You don't want to do it if there's already a minion on the Druid side of the board. On an empty board, it's completely fine to just go for three. Absolutely. Tricky turn for Skaka. Inner, inner Rage, Druid of Claw seems good, but then he... Well, he it's, doesn't have it, anything. Yeah, it's really powerful to innovate it here, but the, he, he's thinking about his following turns here. How, how bad is the turn 4 going to be? He does have the swipe, so that's something, but it's not optimal. He, he's trying to figure out a way. If there, if there maybe somehow was a way to keep the innovate, maybe use hero power and the shade to take out the frothing. Okay, so he decides to hero power because there is actually no following on the other turns. He has to, uh, even though he can play Druid of the Claw, it's not the best play. There is nothing on 5 and swipe on 4 is not great. Oh, oh my goodness, look at that object. There is that death spite. Two inner rages, cream patron. What more can you ask for? That's the dream. That's exactly what you want. Uh, there is even no Harrison Jones for a Skaka, so it seems like Dice will be able to just play death spite, go face. Uh, the Frothing the Froding Berserker just stays there. Yeah, it's, it's there. It's going to stay there. It's going to get swiped next, and most likely. Oskaka chose to keep the inner rate. He wants to rush out the Dr. Boom as fast as he can. With the inner rate, he can do that on turn five. So this is something you mentioned, Slavitz. This is a, a tempo matchup from Warriors' perspective. Uh, Thais wasn't afraid to play the frothing early, even though some players maybe would keep the frothing for their later turns yeah. and try to combo out frothing and Warsong. You don't need it. Like, it's the same thing as with the Warsong commander. Frothing is even better. You just drop those. You don't need those against Druid. You need to know the matchups. And in this matchup, frothing is not key. So even though it's early in the game, Ostkaka is facing a dire board, and he will expect Patron and Rage. What would be the way? the best way to stop that from his perspective. Do you even attack it with the shade and try to deal with the frothing? Because that frothing is, is dangerous on its own. Uh, you absolutely keep the shade in stealth here because of their death spite. And the death spite is just going to clear up the shade if you unstall it, so... Looking like a fairly clean swipe, I, I would say. Probably just a swipe. Next turn, try to find some kind of clear with Force of Nature. Like, Force of Nature kind of does it if there's only one inner rage, because it's going to be four patrons. Well, it, it, yeah, I guess there would be one remaining, but... You can almost clear it. Yeah, that's, that's at least something you can yeah. do. Okay, so he can clear. With the Shade, he can keep, take out one of the full HP patrons. And with the Force of Nature, he can take out the two damage ones. But it's not just that one in range. That's oh true, but this is the big turn. Go. Green patron in range. Here we go. Everybody is getting in here. 
We will have a full board afterwards, but it, it might not be an issue because it just saw a swipe happen. And you are, like, being Thais, you are not even considering this shade that much. You are happy that you have this board. And for Druid on turn 5, is there anything specific? Well, we see Innervate in Force of Nature, but being Thais, would you expect something from Druid to happen? Like a, like a swipe? He just saw the swipe. Sometimes in this situation, you just go for one inner rage. And... Oh, wow! There is a swipe, but can you really clear the board? Or is there always a patron remaining? The board, the board is full, as you mentioned, so maybe there is a way to actually use that to your advantage. Yeah, by swiping first um, and then taking out one of the full HP patrons, that would only leave uh, Thais with uh, one 3-2 one patron, one... Um, one sh no, what? One three two patron and one three one patron, I believe. After attacking with the shade, and he can innervate yeah. the hero power to kill the three one patron. Right. So there will only be a three two patron and the one one armor smith remaining afterwards. And the best thing for Skaka is that that will be only two minions remaining, the one two armor smith. Mm -hmm. So battle rage is not that great. I mean, he has to go for the five. This <laughs> he's dead if he innervates the doctor boom. Force of nature mm, doesn't really work. It, it would leave so many full HP patrons up. So that's going to be the swiper. Almost certainly he's also going to innervate out either the Shade or the Hero Power. Probably the Shade. Yeah, that's an excellent use of the full board. No no more patience yep. because there is no room for them to spawn. Yep. He might actually not use the Shade here because of the Force of Nature for next time. But he might also be worried about Battle Rage and uh, because of that take out one of the patrons. Oh and man, that Battle Rage. Look at that. Two mana to draw five cards. Is there it's anything incredible. better in the game to draw cards? No, like there's no card that would have been better in this situation. <laughs> That's incredible. I also want to point out that Thais has a brawl in his patron. Wow. That's not something that we see often. That's not something common. Uh, was there a big game hunter from Life Coach uh, perspective? There was. Life Coach was running big game hunter and uh, Thais now with a brawl. It's possible they are both running both of those cards. Or uh, maybe they discussed it together and were just thinking that, okay. Like, we need some kind of tools like this, and Thais just prefers having the Brawl over the big game, and maybe a Life Coach's style complements the big game hunter better. Absolutely. There is Force Nature for Skaka, so he will attempt to clear on his side. And uh, I want to mention also that he didn't clear that one patron, because uh, he took the gamble that there will be no uh, Battle Rage. Yep. He hoped there is no Battle Rage. Unfortunately for him, Thais had it. That's right. And Thais, even though he's drew so many cards, he cannot deal the remaining 8 damage here. He needs the Warson Commander. A lot of conditional cards, actually. Double Shield Block, yeah. uh, Shield Slam as well. So this is the version which is more, well, controlish. Not even a weapon, but on the other hand, I mean, after the Shield Block, he's gonna go up to... Uh, how much HP? Uh, Over 50 if he does both of the Shield Blocks. Yeah, absolutely. And he can deal with both Shades. He has an Execute and a Slam. Right. So he can just buy himself time. Druid is an 8. Uh, we see Ancient of Lore, so there is some heal possible, uh, but it might be the turn if the shades are being cleared to just Dr. Bone yeah. next turn for Skaka. Even though Thais cannot close out the game just yet, it looks like he should have plenty of time to find that war song. Oh, goes for the Frothing Berserker. I would imagine that then in this case he is going to remove both of the, both of the shades. Yeah, there's a Shield Slam. Yeah, Shield Slam executed, it seems. Uh, that's pretty good. He is uh, having a board right now, so it, Askaka has to do something. And if he goes with Dr. Boom, there is a big possibility that will be enough damage to finish the game. Absolutely. And if you go for Ancient of Lore, you do heal, but you, do you are win really the game? Behind. Yeah, do you win the game if you, if you lore heal? Is there um, anything else? Uh, uh, charging Druid of the Claw, maybe? Into the Frothing and uh, Aspirant? The thing is that Ostkaka has an option open to just exhaust all the resources from Thais. Right. If you kill Frodings, if you kill Patrons, at some point Patron just has no thief to, to kill you. That is true, and in this situation where, where Thais is uh, so high on the life total, I would imagine that he is going to try something like that, even though it does seem kind of desperate. It is desperate, but that's the line of play he took. He just wants to kill uh, everything that Thais is going to play. There is a death spite though, so we are getting closer to the game finish from Thais' perspective. Yep, all he needs is uh, some kind of minion and, and a warzone. Okay, okay, well, he needs to dig a little bit deeper into his deck, but with those two shield blocks and the slam, he will be able to do so. Yeah, that's a lot of draw. Yeah, uh, let's see what he gets from the shield block. From Tyson's perspective, not only he's in good position because Oskaka is on his last uh, points of health, but he's not afraid of dying. It's like right. sometimes Druid can steal the win with the combo with Force Nature and Savager, but mm -hmm. at this, this position, Tyson just has all the time in the world. 
Yep, also that one damage from the Armorsmith is quite meaningful because otherwise after Ostkaka's hero power he would be up to 5 and just the death wouldn't be enough. So in this situation Ostkaka will be forced to heal or he would just lose the game to the death fight alone. Yeah, but Ostkaka knows that he needs to heal and use the hero power as well yep, for that absolutely. extra point. Yep. Alright, so kind of forced the Ancient of Lore there. Uh, on the Tysus side, he's missing 5 points of damage. Yep. Oh, there's the Warsong. Well, Vakulai, that's pretty good. That's a lot of card draw. But do you want to commit to Warsong here? Absolutely you... not. You, you definitely hold on to the Warsong until you have the lethal. So, uh, drawing with the, with the slam potentially, could he just find it here? I, I think Rotting would just do it. So there's Aqualite of Pain, he's gonna clear the board and draw many cards. At this point, even though opponent is so low, it's better to clear the board and draw the cards because you do have the War Song. Oh yeah. Like, why not clear? Buys him even more time. And he is going to draw even more cards because this Aqualite of Pain are going to stick around for some time. Yep. Emperor Torreson from the top, that's a great card, but in this situation... I don't know, like, I don't, there's not that many cards that would really pull him out of this. Maybe Ancient of War, if there was no Execute available for Thais. Oskaka just needs to survive. Like, looking at the health pool right now, there's no way for him to win the game pretty fast. He just needs to wait till Thais draws everything and then try to counter it. But right. Thais has still, like, a second page in the deck. He has yeah. some more wind effects in hand, even Execute. Yeah, it's a tough spot for, for Ostkaka. And Dr. Boom would be more powerful than the Emperor, but do you really want to get those Boombots out there when there's two Acolytes on the board? Well, if you want to exhaust the resources, yeah. Ostkaka <laughs> concedes, so Thais is taking game number one. Well, it's, re yeah, it's really rare to see concedes in, uh, in games like this when it's technically not over because people don't like to like, play to the end, but can't play most Kaka there. It was looking completely hopeless. Absolutely, with all the tools. Like, even though he didn't see what we saw in Thais's hand, mm -hmm. you can imagine that with the Acolytes of Pain, Thais is going to right. draw all the things. And Oskaka is well aware of what's remaining in, uh, in uh, Thais's deck. The second patron, the one frothing berserker, and it's just so many things. It's really hard to counter Patron. It is, it really is. So mostly when you come into the tournament, you assume that, hey, if I win versus Patron, great. But like, Patron is going to win, and I just need to stop the other decks from winning. Right. It de depends on the lineup. That's um, it's a really... Well, uh, hmm. I want to say big win, but maybe it wasn't that big of a win for Thais, because that Patron was, like you mentioned, it, it was kind of expected to get that one, one win. Yeah. But, uh, the yeah. big. So what's the, what's the biggest deck? What's the, the most important deck for Thais? Uh, because Oskaka had the Priest. For Thais it's that Druid. Like, he doesn't want to play the Druid against the Priest in particular. But uh, Druid, can, Druid just, it's not bad. I'm not saying Druid is bad, but it's, it might be a bit um, like risky. If you, do, if you get bad draws, if you get three games in a row with the Druid, you never draw Wild Growth or Inner Weight. It can be rough, and that might... Uh, True. So if Druid has a bad matchup versus Dragon Priest, mm -hmm. there's also the Patron. And we discussed it. It's really hard to say what's actually having a bad, better matchup. It is. The stats say that uh, Druid has a better matchup versus Patron? I'm not sure. At least it had before. It's close. It's pretty close. Yeah. I think it might be slightly Druid favored yeah, based on, uh, on just stats, statistics from, uh, from competitive games. That's true. But then like Patron is one of the most difficult decks to play. So it is. Yeah. Easy to make mistakes. Yeah. Well, if you only had like Colento and uh, and life coach playing on the patrons, I think the win rate would be higher than it is. And the last deck for Thais is a Warlock. We don't know which Warlock this is, but I have to assume it's Handlock. Yeah, I, I would be shocked if it was anything else but Handlock. Thais is a player who is well like, capable of playing any kind of Warlocks, but Handlock is his favorite, and uh, it's very strong in the meta right now, so it would be a big upset, I think, if, if, uh, if he was to bring, let's say, a Malagas Warlock or, or a Zoo. We've seen Malagos Warlock being uh, played in the qualifiers. Oh, yeah. In theory, it has a good matchup versus uh, a standard handlock or maybe demon handlock as well. It's decent. It's not that great. If you're dropping a 3 6 when your opponent is dropping an 8 8, it's, it's not that good. But, but it's b double big game hunters in the Malagos Warlock do sometimes swing the game in your favor. If you, if you draw one in time on the correct moment, or, or you just uh, know that your opponent is playing a handlock and you can keep one in the starting hand. Getting the big game hunter on the first giant, it's a huge swing. Yeah, it is huge. And mostly you just go to the end game, and then Malagos has had the combo, and Handlock is going to down because he, uh, with health, you want to have the, um, the Molten Giants at some point. Absolutely. Players still considering their next decks here, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah, there is a lot of mind games involved as well. Uh, is Oskaka going to bring the Dragon Priest, or is he going to bring his other deck? Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to 
fit into that good matchup. You want to find the matchup that's best for you yeah. to have an easy win with the deck. Like, this is uh, so huge, because Ostkaka, if he queues up the Priest and runs it into the hand, like he's in bad shape, but if, if, uh, if it goes against the Druid, suddenly he's doing quite well. Oh yeah, we're going to wow. see Warlock versus Druid, so Thais is bringing his Demon Handlock versus Ostkaka's Druid, and I believe this matchup is actually favoring Druid. Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. The Demon version of uh, Handlock does have a little bit better because of the lack of silences in the Druid. The Druid, Druid, yes, does have those two Keeper of the Groves, but you can't silence two Drakes and two Void Callers. So eventually there's going to be something something that uh, can be tough to deal with. Oh, the Big Game Hunter in the starting hand for Ostkaka. That's great against the Handlock. Yeah, and Innervate sh um, Shade is also really good if you are able to, to Innervate that Shade early. You will be able to just wait till Shade grows. The thing is that do you even do that if your curve is bad? I don't think you do it here. The curve is so bad. He doesn't have a file, wild road to follow it up, and uh, that might result in a lot of hero powering. But I, wouldn't, I don't think it's a like, completely terrible play, because if you innervate it out right now, and you're against the hand, like, you know that it's going to grow to be like a 10-10 or something eventually. It can be almost impossible to deal with, especially with, uh, with the trend of not running a Sylvanas Windrunner in the, in the hand list right now. So, Savit. We mentioned that Tice is playing the Demon Handlock. Mm -hmm. What is that deck? Like, a, a lot of people know Handlock, which is the Control Warlock deck that draws a lot of cards, plays Giants. But why do people play Demon deck, and what, are, what is the difference? Demon, uh, Demon Handlock is a little bit faster. You, you cut those Sludge Belchers for the Void Colors. You have more things to do on turn 4, and uh, Silence cards in general are not very popular. I think that's the biggest thing, and the biggest reason why Demon Handlock is so popular and so strong right now. Because a lot of decks, a lot of common decks, a lot of popular decks do not have those silence effects for it. Even, and even the decks that do, they, they still uh, might struggle to get everything silenced that they want to. So against, let's say, any kind of aggressive deck, when you pull out a, a Jaraxxus or a Malaganis on those early turns, it can be rough to deal with. It seems like it's really rough for Skaka also with his hand, but what do you say about uh, Tyson's hand? It seems like he has the, a pretty good opening with that Twilight Drake and uh, Void Caller. It's decent, but I've seen better too. There's no demon for the Void Caller, so playing it next turn is going to be a little bit clunky if he doesn't top deck a demon from. You know. There's no Keeper oh, of the Grove wow. for Skaka. No, but a piloted Shredder, that's still. A, it's, it's not perfect, but it's still pretty good. I would expect to see the Shade stay in stealth here. He could rot and use the Shade, but the Shade is worth way more than that. In theory, isn't Pilot Shredder even better than Keeper? Keeper would be really nice, but Keeper trades with the, with the Drake and you have nothing left. And with Pilot Shredder, it's able to deal 4 damage and maybe you can finish it with the... Yeah, but on average rock. you get something smaller than a 4-4 that your opponent is going to have remaining. So I, I think the Keeper would have been a tiny bit better, but Shredder still at 4 mana, definitely a great top deck. Skaka keeping the shade without attacking, just try, trying to outgrow all the AoE Shadow Flames just yeah. to prepare it for the combo on turn 9 or 8. No demon to go with the Void Caller here, so he's probably going to lean towards the Dark Bomb. Either going for uh, Owl Dark Bomb or the Life Tap Dark Bomb. Is if, there, if there was a demon, he would have probably just dropped the Void Caller. Is there anything else you want to silence in Druid deck, or is just uh, Pilot Shredder the best target? Not really. I mean, Ancient of War. Okay, <laughs> speaking of it, <laughs> Ancient of War is one, but it, uh, it comes pretty late in the game, and the Giants can usually deal with it kind of okay. So I think, I think it's, it's completely fine to just silence the, silence the Shredder. It's good enough. Absolutely. Well, for Skaka, it seems like a pretty good Azure Drake. Uh, drawing a card and developing the, developing the board. Unfortunately, he's going to lose it to the Drake attack. Oh yeah, the Azure Trick is not perfect, but it kind of looks like the only play. I mean, you're not going to play the Impo VGH here. What about... Do you want to draw a 6-drop? So you might potentially raft it to 1 and then Hero Power again. Do you have enough time? Can you be slow enough? Yeah, but the Azure Trick also draws you a card, so it's kind of the same thing as... But ooh, that's aggressive. Alright, so Oskaka is going for the board presence. He wants to kill the minions right now and not take any more damage. Yeah, but it's going to work out quite well. He saw one Dark Bomb go on the Shredder, so he thinks that there's a, there's a fair chance that the, sh that the Shade cannot be dealt with right now without a Hellfire. And if there was a Hellfire, the Hellfire would be 4 mana, and what do you do with the one, remaining 1 mana? That's Hell true. Hellfire so wouldn't even be that powerful. So he's putting Thais in an awkward position. Also, he protects his other, other Drake next turn. Yep, that's a really interesting situation. There's, an, there's no demon in, in Tyson's hand, so it's an, the Void Caller is actually not going to do all that much, but if you're Skaka, you got to be a little bit worried. What if there's Jaraxxus coming out of it? 
Yeah, it is a good bluff. But then Jaraxxus on its own is do not doing much. You need to have Defender Vargas. Uh, the right. good thing for Skaka is that if there is Morganis, he will be able to, to big him hunter it. That is true. So Jaraxxus is kind of, I suppose, the, the only thing that you really worried about. Well, maybe Doomguard too. No, the Doomguard is pretty scary. Doomguard is scary, yeah. <laughs> but Skaka decides to go for phase to put uh, Thais pretty low. He has Savage Roar, so he wants to be aggressive here and finish the game as fast as possible. Yeah. Uh, what's important is to one-turn kill the Warlock. You don't want to give Warlock uh, time to play the Molten Giants, turn them up and play the heal bot. That's the worst that can happen to you. Right, Thais kind of forced to tap here, I believe, just because of, uh, because of that shade. That is so threatening right now. It's up to 7 power, but he does not have the big game hunter available. It's actually... Ins Insanely crazy that Tice has no way to deal with the shade being handlocked. Yeah, because it's two hell hellfire, at least one hellfire. Some some demon handlock wrists only run one hellfire. I personally run only one. So, but at least one hellfire, two dark bombs. One was used, so one dark bomb remaining still. One owl was used in the shredder too. Yeah. So this, now that I think more about it, there's actually quite a few of the cards that he would uh, oh, wow. would need to have been used. That's it. Wow, is that going yeah, to be that's, little? Yeah, that's enough. The Savager is 6 and there is um, 12 on board, so that's 18 plus hero power. That's oh. exactly 19. Yep. So Oskaka going for the Savage Roar. And now with the minions and the hero power, he has enough to finish the game, oh, attacking man. the Shade. Wow. That turn one Shade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, it pulled a lot of weight. Wow. So, Incredible. That was such an excellent game. Oskaka just playing around those AoEs. You know, sometimes you just have to assume that, that your opponent doesn't have the way to kill your, your shade or whatever you do. Yeah, he took up a bit of a gamble there, I think, uh, to unstill the shade, but there was just nothing that Tice could have done do to it after that, uh, that um, owl dark bomb on the shredder. It, maybe it, in the end it kind of came back to hurt him a little bit. But on the other hand, that what was the other play? He could play the Void right. Caller, and he didn't have a Demon. Well, he was in the end forced to do that. Maybe use the Drake on the Strider. Just take, a, take some damage on that, try to go for a Life Tap. I don't know. It's a really close decision there, and I don't, there was like no mistakes. It's just like different lines. And Absolutely. It's, it's amazing it. about Hearthstone that yeah. sometimes you just have those different lines of play, yeah. and it changes the game. And also, like, the cards that you draw on the following turns can sometimes decide which line works out better, not necessarily like what's, what's, what's in your hand at the moment you do it. That's true. And uh, we're watching Europeans' finest, Thais versus Kaka, Navi versus G2. Yeah, all tied up one on one now. Oh man, all right, so um, now it's one one. What do, what do they take? Are we going to see Dragon Priest? We might. Hopefully, <laughs> I want to yeah. see some dragons. Me too. Maybe it's time. It's time for some dragons. Well, we've seen Twilight Drake being played and the Demon Handlock, but you know, we see Twilight Drake from time to yeah. time, and with Dragon Priest, you have. Uh, a lot of new cards, are, uh, really interesting cards, and it's really great to watch. Yeah, it's really cool to watch Priest in general, because it, it's, not, it's something that we don't see all that often. So it's a refreshing change to, to some of the more popular ones that we might see more often. Absolutely. And we are not going to see a uh, Warrior versus Warrior mirror match anymore, because Dice won with Warrior. Yep. No, no Druid versus Druid either. Just that one that's Druid true. Is out of the way. That's true, but we might see Druid versus Warrior again, which is, in my opinion, an interesting matchup. It's okay. A lot of things can happen, and we, we still argue which deck is better in that matchup. Yeah, so we need to do statistics on, on this tournament, about how I, in the end it goes. So that, that's one of the matchups that I would expect to see the most out of all the, all the possible ones. So now the mind games begin. Ties. Does he take the Demon Warlock again? Uh, or is he changing them? And mm. Oskaka, uh, does he think that Tice is going to stay with the deck and get the better matchup? Or is he going to think that Tice is going to take the second deck? You know, it, it's a little bit like Rock, Paper, Scissors situation right here. Because of that Priest, how it has a good and a bad matchup remaining. But let's see how it goes. Oh! That's Handlock versus Patron! Yeah. All right, guys, game number three is starting. We have the 1-1. One, one. And we're halfway through the match. Yep. And um, Handlock is, is usually quite good in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. As a, people say that you can't counter Patron, but mm. I've seen many Handlock uh, decks just win versus Patron. What, uh, as a Handlock, as a Demon player, what you have to do, just play the threats. And right. Demon version is much better than the standard version, because you have the Demons as well. And there's only double execute for Warrior. Yeah, like, Handlock is as close as it gets to countering Patron. Just, just the, the size of the threats 
it's so incredible. Dropping those 4-9 Twilight Tracks, the 8-8 eight eight Giants, and the Warrior only has two executes. Some players like Life Coach we saw that were was taking in a Big Game Hunter, but that's one of the cards that hurts the combo potential in other matchups. So uh, generally players uh, do not run that extra removal. Absolutely. Do you think maybe... I wonder what Askaka has, because we've seen Brawl for Ties, we've seen Big Game Hunter for Life Coach. Maybe Askaka is bringing something like Dread Corsair, maybe also a, a Big Game Hunter. <laughs> you never know. There's a, there's a lot of ways to build pa Patron, and uh, there's no one, or, one right or wrong. Okay, so Askaka facing that tough matchup, what he needs to, he needs to draw. He needs the cards to be able to, to get the Torison, reduce the cost, and then win the game with Patience and Warsome Commander. Yeah, that's a pretty good hand from Ties here, with that coin. Double Twilight Trick. You know, I mean, Twilight Tricks are not as scary as Giants, but when you're going, when you're playing on the coin, it, the, the Twilight Trick you can, is something that you can play one turn earlier than you than uh, in, uh, if you had a Giant instead. That's absolutely great threat. And uh, Tynes went for the Twilight Trick. There is a second one. So for Askaka, can he deal with it, or do you even ignore it? It's it's a bit tricky. So I don't he, think that's a good way to remove it. He can remove... Can he, like, with something ridiculous like Slam and Fiery War X, use both of the minions? No, there's no efficient way. That's, that, that's safe to say. So it seems like one of the best ways is just to play the Death Spite, attack into it, yep. and then it just attack with the minions to the face. I like it. Some, some uh, good warrior players say, like, I think I've heard Zalei, who's one of the be better North American patron players, say that if you have a dead spite for turn four, you need to have a really good reason not to play it. Yeah. You almost said you almost always play it on four. Not every time. Sometimes Nomi's Inventor is better because of, because of the card show. If you have nothing to hit with the weapon, but quite often it is the dead spite, and he does choose to go with it here. And we've also mentioned that there is only double executing the deck as removal, possibly shield slam. Mm -hmm. If you if you have a chance to deal with the minions with your weapon, it's actually saving your removal for later. Right. The Oscar are really looking for a battle rage here. There is a patron. No, but you don't. You don't patrons against hand like. <laughs> well, honestly, if uh, because with the death spray to the face, he kills the minions as well. Yeah, he only gets two patrons as well. It, it's a bit weird. I would probably. I think we're gonna see an acolyte here. Because he wanted to do the cards. Right. Acolyte and maybe swing on the face with the death spite. Do you even swing? You can acolyte attack oh, into maybe the you don't. Oh, he's going to go for he's the going for the patrons. Wow. Oh, this is interesting. It might pay off big time. There is no Hellfire available. So that's, again, a very high-risk, high-reward play. And Definitely. Oskaka is assuming there is no AoE yeah. for, uh, from Tyson's side. But uh, on the other hand, like, was it that high-risk high, high risk in the end? Like, all he used was the Dead Spite for that, and he was swinging with the Dead Spite anyway, so the Patrons, you know, it's, kind of like, it's a card that you usually don't get that much value out of, so maybe it was completely fine here. It's not committing that much in the end. Yeah, it's just one card. Right. And you still have the draw in your, in your hand, so if Thais is able to deal with the patrons, you will have the ways to actually draw more cards. Like counting it up if our horse and commander were least, was lethal here, but I think it would have been one or... Uh, that's seven plus... No, it actually would have been nine, lethal. Sixteen, because yeah, that, of the fire war axe. Yeah, with the fire... Because you have the set of whirlwind and the fire war axe, so if, if that object was a war axe... That been. was a gamble. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. And it's still like, even, even though he's not going to be able to kill Thais just yet, it's kind of working out. Well, there is no worse than now, and you can't really go for face unless you take another gamble that there are no Molten Giants. Right. In fact, there are no Molten Giants. There are no Molten Giants, but if you if you Ostkaka, you have to be worried about those. And there he has could be Molten Giants. It's absolutely possible. Yeah, so he is going to go for the trade. He's going to be Jarax or Mulcanis. Um, at least Jaraxus. There's your accident, there is its own giver for Ties. There is Sun Fury Protector. Yeah, so, yeah. he's not attacking face because of the, the possible Molten Giants, right? Right. Because if those got taunted up, he, he would have a rough time getting through. Oh, he is going for it. Wow. Okay. And there is no Molten Giants. Ostkaka playing it risky, but it's, it, it seems to be rewarding him crazy. Hellfire oh, from there, the top. There's a Hellfire, yeah, so Dice will be able to clear the board with that one Hellfire. Yep, and he, after that, I, I would imagine that he has to go, go with the Sun Fury. It's going Absolutely. to be so low, he's going to go down to 6 HP, and with that Fiery War already on the board, 
Warzone Commander and... Uh, Actually, actually, <laughs> yeah, it's like you can many. deal two. Even, like anything with inner rage, basically. Like acolyte with inner rage, ghoul with inner rage, any minion with, with a warsong inner rage. But that's three cards. But still, that, yeah, that's three cards, and he only has three in his hand right now. So maybe that's not too scary. And, and he might just go for the ancient watcher instead after the hellfire. I think you still sun fury. Yeah, I would. I would totally sun fury. The thing is, like, oh, it, there's the, you know, there is an inner rage, oh. yeah. If, so he, if he top decks the war song, yeah, then that <laughs> that sun fury was quite important. But what Oskaka really wants is an execute. He does, but he he does get um, multiple draws at it. He, could, he might even play his acolyte and slam the acolyte. I would be too surprised to see that. It's not a bad play. So he wants execute to deal with Draxus. Mm -hmm. What else that he really wants? Uh, he wants the war song. And uh, something to go with it. I mean, frothing, frothing would be the best thing, but even a patron might be good enough. Emperor, yeah, usually it's, it's very important, but um, you might not need it this game. He's, he has a lot of lot of mana already. Oh, Ooh, there is wow. that execute for Jaraxxus. There is that execute, yeah. And he knows there are no Molten Giants because Thais didn't play them, and he was oh, yeah. below 10. Yeah, I know. He, I know, he knows for sure that there's no Molten. But on the other hand, Thais will have 7 mana, so it's a possible heal bot. Will be able, even if he uh, strikes face this turn, there will mm -hmm. be 11 health. So he probably just needs to continue drawing. And he can play that Execute and Shield Block as well this turn if he wants to. Right. Unstable Ghoul. So he wants to protect the Aquite of Pain, who maybe have a bigger minion on board, and also draw one more card, because if Ghoul dies, then it's 1 damage. Yeah, and it's a little bit tricky spot for Tyson. Oh, there is a Molden Chant, but he does not have a second Taunt Giver. Yeah, no Taunt Giver, but he has the Heal Bot, and he absolutely needs to play the Heal Bot or he dies. Yep, and probably the Owl. He does have 7 mana, so Molten Giant, Iron Big Owl, Antic Heal Bot is uh, it's a decent play, I would say. Yeah, that's a really good board. Unfortunately for Tyson, he will not be able to play Morganis next turn. He still needs to somehow survive, but Oskaka doesn't have a weapon yet. Right. So silencing the ghoul, it's raining for the acolyte. Molten giant heal, but not bad at all. It's so funny that right now something like unstable go is so threatening for Thais. <laughs> right. He needs to protect himself from this small minion. Oh wow, there is a death spite. That's yeah. eight damage. So if Thais is not going to draw any taunt givers, he might be in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, eventually Ostaka will pick up the Warson commander, so the taunt givers are something that Thais must get soon. He does have the Malganis for turn 9, and if there's no Execute on the Malganis, that's kind of like a, like an extra taunt, I guess. Do we know if Oskaka is playing Shield Slam? We, yeah, I haven't seen Shield Slam. No idea. There's the Dread Corsair. So Dread Corsair is another minion that he can play for free if he chooses to go with the Death Spite and go for face. Mm -hmm. Pressure a bit more. Yeah, I think we're gonna see the death spot here. I mean, already, how badly do you want to slam and draw? But you can just slam and draw next turn. Yeah, and you will still have mana to play uh, things. Mm -hmm. You and might, also, yeah. you might not play the Corsair actually. You might just death spite, go face, and keep the Corsair surprise damage. If you uh, happen to draw the Warson Commander, and well, you have a yeah. really good chance with two draws next turn, you might be able to charge the dress, uh, Red Corsair. Interesting. So he's going for some kind of board control strategy. I mean, sure, there could be another heal, but there could be taunts. So it, it does make sense. I would have considered that going for face with the death spite, but can't blame him for taking out the heal. But so he wants to buy himself a bit more time. Yeah. Not relying on uh, just top decking the war song on the next two cards by choosing this line. That's true. So for Dice here, he has the dark bomb to deal with the free free. He can also kill the one one. How badly do you want to kill that one one? I don't think you care all that much about it. I mean, you're not going to attack with your giant in there, just no way. So uh, the, the ghoul is going to stick around for now. But how aggressive is he going to go? He's still maybe like a... He can race. Yeah, so, I was just thinking, like, what if you just play the Doom God and go face for 13 afterwards? But, well, he has 17 no. next turn, which is lethal if there is nothing. Yep. Whoa, Cruel Task Master into that 1-1. One, one. Choosing to hold down to the Ancient Watcher. I'm a little bit worried about the Frothing Berserker getting buffed from uh, Whirlwind effects. And the Watcher, what, what, what would it accomplish here? Nothing. Just uh, add one more damage if there is a Frothing. Right. 
I really like the play from Thais. Now he has 12 power on the board and another 5 from the Doom God. So unless Ostkaka picks up something nice from the slam, I think this might be game. Yeah, Ostkaka is on the brink of uh, being defeated. He needs Warsong, but uh, that's an armor smith, so he might actually be able I, to escape the Doom. No, I think I think that's it. Uh, that Doom God is going to be enough. That's going to be a 17, 17 total. And uh, the best he can do here... He can actually play armor Wait, smith, he throw, could, he could, armor up. He could, yeah, because he can trade in the Ghoul. He could do it, and he even has the Death Spite, so he's going to get that World Renekton. Okay, so he can survive. But then do you really think you're going to die? Uh, there is 12 points of damage incoming, so we can count at Dark Bomb. You know that Doomguard yeah. is a possibility. Right. It's pretty scary, because if you go for that board clear play here, and do, getting that, those, those extra armors... Do you, can, you, can you actually win the game that way? <laughs> Well, I think he just can't attack because of the Frothing Berserker and he wants the Warsong, but that's it. Tyson yeah. has it. That's going to do it with that Doom God. It's going to be enough. Oskaka did technically have a play to survive there, but that wasn't the play to win. It was, a, it was a, solely to survive. And uh, in the long run, I don't think that would have uh, worked out. There's, a bit, there's chances to win with that, that line of play were so slim. I like taking the risk there, even though it didn't work out this time. Yeah, it was a good decision, but on the back of Dungar, Thais is going to take game number three, 2-1 uh, versus Uskaka. And, you know, this is this extra punch that uh, Demon Handlock is packing there, uh, and I love it. Yeah, now uh, Thais only with his Druid remaining. Uskaka with a Warrior and a Priest. So Druid versus Patron. That's this uh, awkward matchup where... Uh -huh, that we've been talking about quite a bit. And we are going to talk if it actually lands. Uh, Druid versus uh, Dragon Priest. You think Dragon Priest has an edge? Yeah, absolutely. The, the minions from Dragon Priest are so efficient. The stats for mana, like Vermeer's Agent for 2 mana, 2 4, it's almost impossible for a Druid to clear early on. And even later on, it, it's still tricky. But there is a plot twist. What if Dragon Priest doesn't get any dragons? It can happen, it happens sometimes. Dragon Priest is one of those dragon decks that does play quite a few dragons. You can fit a lot of them in there. But uh, sometimes it still happens. And there's also a couple of versions. Uh, there is a, a Pale Chess version, Shilmo version. Some people play uh, Shilwar Pain, some don't. So um, I wonder what the Skanka is, is really bringing here. And uh, how did he tweak his deck versus which lineup which, versus which decks? Yeah, we did see it earlier, but we didn't see all the cards in Ostkaka's deck in his first match. Yeah, so that's true. I'm kind of hoping that we're going to see it uh, in the next game. Hopefully. Uh, but uh, if this is Druid versus Patron, I'm excited as well, because that's one of the, the hardest matchups as well. And uh, how are the players going to play? Is it going to be a tempo match from Patron? Is Druid going to get the ramparts and play Druids of the Claw earlier? So anything can happen there. Okay, and uh, the players are ready. We're going to start game number four. Thais versus Kaka. Nice. If Thais wins this, he's going to be the first European player to qualify for the World Championships at BlizzCon. Yeah, there, there we see that, that wild pyromancer in Nostkaka's uh, priest once again. It's quite rare to see it in the Dragon version. Wild pyromancer, while it is uh, kind of core in the control of priests, in the dragon priests, usually you just play the dragon stuff instead and you can't quite fit it in. But I, I like the, the selection of wild pyromancer. Getting those clears against maybe Paladin, Master for Battle, this uh, against Hunter, it, it can be quite powerful. But against the Druid, we just have to, have to see if he can utilize well. Yeah, it's, uh, well, against Druid as a, as a minion, is a free two that you can play. Yeah, it's, it's not that great, really. It's not that great. But yeah, absolutely, as you mentioned, versus Paladin is a, is a good tech card. Mm. Uh, what, what do you think about Vol'jin? Is Vol'jin, is, uh, sometimes it is in the list, sometimes it's not. I really like it, personally. I think it's an amazing card. It's one of my favorite Priest cards, after a Cabal Shadow Priest. <laughs> but uh, it, how good is it? I, I know that a lot of people choose not to play it. It, it can be a little bit situational. Sometimes you just rather would have um, something like Lotep on turn 5. Something that you all know that will always be good on turn 5. Vol'jin, well, you don't want to play 6-2, and then if you end up hero power passing, it, it feels bad. It's not great versus aggro as well. But if you know in the tournament, uh, if you're going to face a lot of handlocks, I think Vol Vol'jin is an excellent choice. Right. All right, so what do you think about Tyson's hand? He has uh, Aspirants, and he has Ancient of Lore. Is that good versus Priest? Yeah, that's pretty good. Lores are really important against the Priest, because uh, quite often the matches do go quite long, and uh, if both of your Ancient Lores are at the bottom, the Priest is quite often going to outvalue the Druid. By the way, Oskaka has a Dragon, so this is going to be more or less an even match. Uh, fun fact is that this well is probably not going to see the play 
Um, yeah. You want to keep the dragon. You want to keep the dragon for Corruptors, for Twilight Guardian, so you can't play that well till you get another dragon. Has basically. a dragon, but hasn't, doesn't have another dragon for the dragon. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Dragons come in purse. Well, there's the Aspiron, but there's already a Valence Chosen waiting in Oskaga's hand. I think he would, he's going to save the Shadow Word Pain for later on. That just improves his board so much more, and he gets to save one card. It's a big minion, and it it's is. hard to do with it. Even if you silence it, it's still like a... Well, it's only a 1-4, I suppose. It's not too bad. Really important silence for Thais. If Thais did not have a silence in here, it would be in a lot of trouble. There is a dark, cult, dark cultist. You still can't really play the whelp. No, the whelp is definitely going to stay in his hand. There might be something like Blackwing Corruptors in, or actually we know that there's Blackwing Corruptors in Ostkaga's hand, so that whelp is not getting played anytime soon. Dark cultist kind of looks like the only play. He could shut over pain that there might not be other many, other big targets or other good targets for the shut over pain. But I like the cultist a lot more. Sometimes you want to keep Shadow War Pain for the future. There is a Darnus' Aspirant hidden behind the taunt, right. so you can for actually some. reach it out. Yeah, for example, then. Thais' hand looks really good with those Ancients of Glory. He will yeah. always have the minions and the cards in hand. Wow. This is looking excellent for Thais right now. Oskaka really needs to get uh, a lot of pressure going, because if the game goes long, I don't, I don't think that uh, Oskaka can outvalue Thais in this situation. There's already one Azure Drake played for one extra draw and two, two Ancient of Lords. They're gonna provide him with four additional cards. Well, talking about pressure, that Corruptor actually created a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of it. The board is big and it killed Azure Drake as well easily. Quite possibly the best best draw Oskaka could have hoped for. Such a strong Warlock card. Well, yeah. it's a priest. Uh, well, it's like a general card, but there is a Warlock on it. It was so important for Oskaka. It's actually now suddenly looking quite all right because the, with that Keeper on the board, he, he even has the Cabal Shadow Priest lined up for the following turn. So uh, if Thais is... Oh, I like this a lot. So he will be able to clear with this, not saving the Force of Nature for the combo. He has such a great hand that he doesn't really need that, that is one true. Force of Nature. Yeah. He does not need a combo to finish this game. He can just do it with, uh, with his minions. Also what Priest really can do... Ball. The Dragon Priest, mm -hmm. if the Dragon Priest takes over the board, it's really hard to come back, especially for the Druid. Yeah. Sometimes even against Druid, you want to hold down the Force of Nature for the lethal combo, but if, you, if your hand looks like it's kind of fast and you just have to end the game quickly, but this is not a hand where you have to end the game quickly. He can, like, for Thais, all he needs to do is go to the late game. Would you be afraid of the Priest, by the way? Like, if Priest has the board, would you be afraid of dying? Like, Priest doesn't have that much burst overall. No, there's almost none. Some of the like, Valence Chosen is kind of some burst, I suppose, because you get that plus, like, plus two attack and the spell power, which can sometimes be combined with something like Smite and, uh, and Holy Nova. But uh, the burst in Priest is very, very little. The best burst you can have is, like, Isera into Isera Awakens or yeah. Nightmare, and they just finish right. the game with that. Yeah, out of the user, but that's coming so late in the game. Yeah, well, oh. so for Dice, he can just play the long game and just try to play Attrition War, exhaust his Kaka's cards. Look at this hand from Ostkaka now. Even though he had a, a nice turn 5 and a nice turn 6, this turn 7 right here is looking so awful. What, what do you even do? Uh, oh, man. If you can't really light bomb because it doesn't make sense. He's going to have to Holy Nova. doesn't even accomplish all that much. Kills the damage. He goes face. Askaka yep. with the priest just goes aggro and forces Thais to respond to that, but Thais is sitting comfortably on what he has right now. Yeah. Still at 18. I, I can't quite imagine Ostkaga being able to rush Thais down here. The Holy Nova, by the way, puts um, Ancient of Lore on free health. So in this way, Oskaka just uh, secures the, the death of the right. event. The Holy Nova was awful there, but out of the options that he had, it was still the best one. He has another Holy Nova in his hand, so if something like a Shade was to come out, he could use the second Nova or potentially even the Light Bomb. So being Thais here, you probably just kill the 4-5. Oh yeah, you're going for the board with, the, uh, with that hand. He has a full hand. <laughs> How many cards is that? There's nine cards in his hand. And he also knows like Priest uh, overall has a lot of reactive cards, especially after seeing that Holy Nova. Yeah. What um, would you think if you see Holy Nova from, Beast, uh, from Priest on turn 7? I think there's a lot of reactive cards and, uh, and slow cards. I would, if, if I was the Druid here, I would imagine that something like Yusera is coming up. Because that, that would be one of the minions that would not get played on that turn. Because any minion would have been better than the Holy Nova, really. 
that's true. Except for the Twilight, well, of course. Well, now he gets Cabal Shadow Priest, but it doesn't seem great. The Cabal Shadow Priest is just going to die to the 5-5 five -five next turn. Now, another reactive card that is just not... Or another situational card that is just not good in this situation. Dark is so rough. There are not that many targets for Cabal Shadow Priest versus Druid. Not really. I mean, Keeper of the Grove is usually the best one. You do even want to steal an Aspirant. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. No, you don't. It's so bad. It's just like your opponent gets to give his, his mana crystal, and not only that, but you're going to destroy one of your own. I mean, it's a lot of power, I guess. You kind of, for free, you're removing a 2-3 and adding a 2-3 on your side, but still. If it's turn 10, maybe you don't care that much about that. Right. At turn 10, it's, uh, it's kind of nice to steal. Askanka decides not to do anything, because playing the Cabal Shadow Priest into the 5-5 five five, uh, would achieve nothing. So yep. he wants to set up a Light Bomb for oh, the yeah. turns. And this is the moment for Ty. Like, does he go for the most powerful player, or does he somehow like, uh, attempt to play around the Light Bomb? Light Bomb is, the, is one of the cards that Oskaka could potentially make a good comeback out of if he managed to, to do a good one. Well, Thais has to be really happy about it, because if Oskaka does nothing, it means there is no Shadow or Death, there is no Vol'jin, there is nothing to kill the 5-5. Five five, right. Where normally Priest has a lot of ways. And Oskaka is absolutely forced to use the Light Bomb here. I, I can't really imagine him doing anything else. Yeah, there is a Black Link Raptor which would kill the 5-3, but there is no need to do that, and yeah. it could just die to the bombs. Yeah, way too much pressure on the board for Oskaka not to use the Light Bomb. He knows that there could be a Force of Nature Savage Roar coming up. And if he leaves three minions up, that would be little. All right, and dies. Now, they, now we know he knows that the light bomb is gone. He knows that there might be a second one, but it's unlikely since it's a dragon's priest. Yeah, most of the priests they play either one light bomb or yeah. maybe Chilmo instead. It depends on the list, but the dragon priest has so many dragon cards already that they have to cut something, and light bomb is one of the things that you're probably going to cut if you're playing dragon. In, in some control type of lists, it's quite common that you see double light bombs. They can afford to run with those type of cards because they don't have to fit in 10 dragons. Light bomb is also weird for a minion deck because you want to be ahead. You want to have minions on board. So right. light bomb is like combat card, but heavy too. It is. Okay, so still for Skaka, not really a great option. He can't clear the board with Blackwing and Holy Nova. He can kill one of the minions, but then Blackwing is just going to die here. No, again, all the options seem pretty bad. The demonstration is something that would have been kind of nice last turn. He could have played it after the Light Bomb, but now here, not really doing anything. Wormrest into Blackwing. No, he's just going to go for the Nova. He has to do it. Okay. Not strong, but something he, ha he had to do. That makes sense, because uh, normally Druid is not developing a huge board. What right. Druid has is like two, two big minions, and that's that's, that was exactly the board. Ah. But it doesn't feel good either, because you know that there's still a shade or two left, so using the last Holy Nova here, one Light Bomb also. Can not, what, if, what happens when the shades come down? How do you remove those? This Priest deck doesn't have Okanai, uh Soul Priest with Circle of Healing, so it might be the last AoE for Skaka, actually. Double. Uh, it might have been, yeah, most likely it was. Here, getting some use out of that swipe. Going face with the Harrison. Skaka down to 19. Power, chill. Ugh. Tice is just setting up lethal. He wanted to have minions on board, he wanted to use the spells on the minions, and uh, with that, with Savage Roar, that would be 12 plus, plus 9. Uh, there is a taunt, though. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't but matter. I like, think that's going to be... Yeah, there's depending a what he top decks, so this is silence. So 9 plus... 12. 9 plus 12. 21. 21 with, with that 10 mana, that's perfect. Yeah. Keeper silence on the taunt, double roar. It's exactly lethal. Let's see if he spots it. Well, I think it's uh, something you really hoped uh, to achieve. Yeah, he's counting. Just look at, look at his face right now. He's, he's like, yes, I got it, I yeah, got it, yeah. I got it. Yes, go to BlizzCon. <laughs> Savage Roar is six. Yes. Second Savage Roar is six. That's 12 plus nine. That's 21. And we silence the taunt. Yes. Goes for the silence. Goes for the roar. This is the second roar. Thais NL going to be the first player to qualify. He made Blizzcon it. BlizzCon from the European Championships. He made it. Last year, it wasn't lucky enough to go into the top four. Something was missing, but this year he is on a roll. One of the most consistent players in the world qualifying from Europe. That was amazing. Wow, it was, it was a really good series. I, I'm so happy for Thais right now. I think that was well deserved. He's, he's been, like, like you mentioned, he's been really consistent. He's been performing well in every tournament that he's participated in. Uh, 
now on the big stage when uh, when you the most need it, it just like goes to zero, just Absolutely. like that. He's done. He's <laughs> one of my think? picks for the final. <laughs> yeah. I want to see him in the final. And uh, Oskaka is not eliminated yet. Oskaka is still fighting. He was that was the winner's bracket. Mm -hmm. So Oskaka is going to play one more match. He still has a chance to actually qualify. Yep. All right. I believe we have Frona with us. Yeah. Well, your, your belief is correct. I'm <laughs> right here in the flush. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. The series was really fun to watch. Um, good, good job by Tice to be able to qualify. Uh, a really big moment, too, for him because last year he got stopped by Kalento, right? And we remember, remember watching it. I, I was casting with Yusuf Eats back then. And we're like, wow, Kalento versus Tice. This could be like the entire European Championship fight. Yeah. But it was ended up being only one player could go through. And then what happened was uh, Tice ended up being one of the primary backups in order to go for BlizzCon. I really want to know what Tice is about to think right now and say he's with Ray waiting for a few words about his victory. Thanks so much, Dan. I am here with Tice. Tice, you're one of the players that, over this past year, I feel like I see a ton of you. You've been at every tournament. You've put up an incredible performance across the board this year. And now you are the first player from Europe to qualify for BlizzCon. Give it up for Tice. Now, you, you came out of that match, and you're holding your head, and, and you seem so happy. What are you feeling right now? At this moment, it feels super amazing. I played the whole year for this, uh, for BlizzCon. I, last year, it was really rough being out at the end, and it, it's just overwhelming, actually, now. Now, we didn't actually even get to see, before we talk about this match, your last match against Maverick uh, was played backstage. How did that go for you? Um, it went 3-1 for me. Uh, I had a rough game with Patreon where I probably called that playing better, but um, I think I played pretty well in the other matches, and... Uh, I had a really good lineup against him, so I was really happy that I could take it 3-1. Well, then you came up here and you played against Oskaka, and I have to ask, what did you think about the fact that Oskaka brought a priest to this tournament? Um, I think it was actually really smart, because he know uh, he will play high first, and it is really good against him. I was considering it a bit too, but um, yeah, not really good against my lineup, to be honest, but um, yeah. Um, I, 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 it really balls from him to bring it, actually. Well, now you kind of get to chill as far as BlizzCon qualification is concerned. But later on today and then tomorrow, we are going to crown our European Hearthstone champion. So do you feel like you want to go the extra mile now, go all the way, or are you really comfortable where you're at? At this moment, I achieved what I wanted to achieve. So I, I'm super happy, and I will just um, take some relaxed time now and uh, prepare with my teammate Adrian a bit, maybe, to f uh, help him. But uh, yeah, when the semifinals come, I will be there. Well, what a wonderful teammate and what a well-deserving player. Why don't we give it up one more time for Tice, our first player to qualify for BlizzCon. And I'm going to give it back to you guys. Congratulations again to Tice. Uh, a long journey from where he was just a year and a half ago. Relatively unknown player from the Netherlands and was having to qualify for events over and over and over. In fact, uh, there used to be a weekly cup called Zotac, and that was a very competitive environment for people to test their skills. Tice won five in a month, even though there's only four weeks. And he had to win both in North America and Europe in the same day. Uh, that's the kind of dedication that this guy has started with, and finally see the culmination of him going to BlizzCon, a fantastic journey. Uh, and you guys were there battling him and casting the entire way. It's, it's just awesome to see a player be able to make a name from nothing and be able to finally land on a BlizzCon ticket. Absolutely. That is an amazing player, and he's almost a back-to-back -back DreamHack champion as well, because he uh, won in Bucharest, and then in the DreamHack winter he was in the finals. Yeah. So, uh, as mentioned before, he's uh, one of the most consistent players, uh, also winning ATLC with his, uh, with his uh, friends. I think he was mostly the backbone of the of the team, where he was uh, really consistent with his scores and uh, bringing decks, uh, good decks to the tournaments. So, um, yeah, I'm re re really looking forward to more games from Thais today and maybe tomorrow in the final. Yeah, the way it's going to happen is that we have a one semi-finalist and one BlizzCon qualified person uh, from Europe. However, we do have to find out three more players today. We're all going to find out who's going to BlizzCon and we're going to even play out the semi-finals until we get to the grand finals ultimately tomorrow. In fact, let's take a look at the bracket and see where we land after three matches on stage. A few things happen backstage as well. As you did see Tice defeat Maverick in the first match off stage. He ended up defeating Noskaka just now. But we do have two more matches. I believe Hoy's playing. Maverick at the moment uh, off stage, and then Oskaka will play the winner of that. 
Whoever wins that final match is going to the semifinals and going to BlizzCon. Savis, when you take a look at this, is this what we've come to expect from this group? I mean, it's a group of that. All these four players are extremely good, and uh, for a European, I, like, I wouldn't mind any, any one of the, the, them going through. Like, all of them are going to do really well and represent the continent. Uh, it's uh, Ostkaka, a little bit rough series there, but if for his sake, I, gonna, I guess I kind of hope that Hoei is going to beat Maverick because then he gets to use his uh, anti Hoei lineup again. Yeah. That's I suppose really, so. That's really <laughs> smart, actually, from Oskaka. Just bring the anti Hoei lineup and then hope that Hoei is going to win his, uh, his losers match. We'll be see. able to win versus him again. Meanwhile, in Group B, we did see Nyria go up against the Titan, that life coach, and was able to defeat him. He's going to be playing against Pavel uh, coming up on stage next. Uh, Pavel did defeat Jira and was able to continue to use the seeding advantage that he has. Uh, and, it, you know, it has that reputation already as a stronger player to be able to carry it through. Life coach will play Jira off stream. Of course, they'll have to wait the, the, the cider match, ultimately, between Nyria versus Pavel. This is all happening right here on this channel, so stick around, guys. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, more action here in the EU Road to BlizzCon in Prague, Czech Republic. Stay tuned.